What is up, everybody? Welcome back. It is Monday, which, as you know, means photo assignments. Now, Thanksgiving is happening this week in the U.S., and so I thought we would do something that's rather seasonally appropriate. So for photo assignment number 14, we are going to do food photography. Now, this is going to be more of a challenge than in a specific technique or exercise that we're going to go through. And remember, the whole point of photo assignments is to challenge yourself creatively in how you think and how you approach what it is that you want to say with a photograph. I know it seems like it might be easy since most people will be probably around a lot of food at some point this week, but really push yourself to go beyond that. And I want to show you some examples today of some things that you might think about that I think have been done pretty well in the historical context of photography, because essentially food photography is going to be very closely related to still lifes, which is something that we have done before. And there's a lot of techniques that go into that, and I want to look at some photographers. I think one of the most famous examples that most of you guys are probably already familiar with is Edward Weston, who did a very well-known series using food as still life, uh, the Peppers are probably the ones people are most familiar with. There are other foods as well. But what I think is interesting about Weston's approach to this, and I think this is very significant, is he approached these with a very organic sensibility. And so sometimes there's a metaphor for other organic shapes you might associate these with. Maybe it's something like the human figure. Maybe it's a fist clenching. Uh, whatever that is, it has this kind of, I guess, almost personification uh, into an object that it's representing, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, there's a real, lot of really neat qualities to these. First of all, they're done in black and white. So you have removed a layer of reality from that. And they're essentially these organic studies of light. And they're absolutely beautiful. Some of my favorite work that he did. Another contemporary of his was Wynne Bullock. This is an image he did called Half of an Apple from 1953, I want to say. And it's half an apple. This image probably wouldn't work the same way if it were in color. And I think it's very important that it is a study in black and white. Because when you start to look at this, you start to see these forms and these shapes in here that are very organic. And they suggest things like maybe the human ear or they might look like an owl. Whatever that is, it starts to have this metaphoric personified quality to it where it leads your mind into other places. And I think that's when this is done very successfully. A contemporary photographer who I mention a lot on the show is Tom Burrell. And I think he has that in a very subtle way in his own work. Um, the images he does of pears. He does a lot of botanical work and I think that's probably what he's most known for. But there are other examples where I think that organic quality and what that might suggest um, to the viewer, I think, is what makes these very interesting. I think this is something that you see a lot, uh, particularly in art of this time. I mean, George O'Keefe was doing these paintings of flowers that had almost these erotic qualities to it. But I think that's interesting because I think that's what we are drawn to when we start to see these things, is we start to look at the shapes and then what that relates to, and it becomes very psychological in a certain sense. So I think these are really interesting examples to look at. Another photographer whose work I absolutely love is Andre Kurt Kurtesh, and it's really interesting to see what he did with some of these organic shapes too. And Kurtesh was an amazing photographer, and one of the most interesting series that I think he did was a series of images that he did with the SX-70 when he was working with Polaroid. And they're very simple images, but because the photographer's really removed from the development process, obviously, with instant film, and then the simplicity of having a fixed lens on a camera that's going to do color only, and really the way it came down for him was just an approach to composition. Not not all of these are foods, but it's really interesting to see the studies that he did with these. I think that's somebody that you could draw a lot of inspiration from. Another very well-known photographer, Joseph Sudek, and he had a very different approach. Um, it, so far, all the examples we looked at really fill up the whole frame of the image, and they're almost, I wouldn't go as far as to say macro, but they're very close up in nature. And the way Joseph Sudek approached these is almost more of a past master style, where there are other elements in the composition, and maybe the apples or the fruit or whatever that is become a part of that. And, you know, there's also other elements that add interest into this too, like, you know, moisture in the window, uh, what's happening with the light in the room, and it's just a very different approach. It's very subtle, but these images do involve food. Another photographer who did some really interesting things shooting food was Irving Penn, and I think the world of Irving Penn, I've talked about him a lot over the last couple of years on this show, and I think what's interesting about Penn is when you consider he was working in New York City, you have Harper's Bazaar and Vogue, which are the competing magazines at the time, and it was an environment where they were both having an image overhaul and really trying to bring a modernist style into the work that they were producing. And so I think it was a perfect storm, if you will, for Penn creatively to be able to insert some really adventurous things into what was going on in essentially publication photography at that time. Now, what's interesting about Penn, and I've always thought this, is that he's kind of of two minds. There's a very conservative side to Penn that's not going to do anything wild or over the top or bizarre 
or strange. But at the same time, there's another side of Penn that is highly experimental. And I think that the, his work is a culmination of all that coming together. And I think that's where you start to see some really interesting things, whether that's portraits or whether that's, you know, whatever that work was. And working for a magazine, there's a lot of interesting food pictures that he did. They're all in color. And these were typically run in magazines against some kind of recipe or an article about cooking or something like that. And some of my favorites uh, are the still lifes he did of frozen foods. First of all, the subject is strange, like who would shoot frozen packaged food at that time? But what I think the takeaway here, and this is what I want you guys to get out of this, is I think you're going to be most successful with anything in photography when you finally find a way to do something new and different that pushes you creatively into that direction that you haven't done before. Something that's not trend based, something that's not style based. And Irving Penn is a really interesting example of where we see that. And it's not easy to do. I get that. It's really difficult. And one last photographer, speaking of frozen foods that I want to mention, who did some really bizarre work is of course William Eggleston. This is an image of a freezer interior, but it is a food image and he is William Eggleston. So I hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration and maybe a reference point on where to start with some ideas on here. Like I say on every photo assignment, push yourself to do different things. Um, if you have a shot that you know you can execute on, for instance, go ahead and get a good shot out of that. But then push yourself to do something you haven't done before or maybe you're not so sure you can succeed on because that's one of the keys to not just photo assignments but anything in life really creatively is that giving ourselves permission to fail is okay. And because you're not going to have success without failure, first of all. And the other thing is if you don't make mistakes, then you have nothing you can learn from. And so those are things that are really key into move, allowing your work to move forward. And, you know, seeing your work on these photo assignments, those are some of my favorite videos to make because it allows us to connect through photography. So the work is really improving and I, I, I love that and I love that it's moving in that direction. I'm going to let you guys know I'm going to be doing some food photography along with you guys in these photo assignments. So you got to follow me on Instagram if you want to see that. I'll put my username below. And uh, so we'll be working on that. Now, another thing I want to mention is the deadline on this. So Thanksgiving is this week. I'm going to be traveling at the end of the week. I'm going up through Chicago and then into the great state of Indiana. And so the likelihood of me actually getting the follow-up video done by next Monday is pretty slim. So what I'm going to do is allow you two weeks on this. And I think the film people will be relieved on this, but I'll give you a full two weeks to work on this. So that would put your deadline at December 2nd. 2017. So anyway, December 2nd will be the deadline that gives me, that's a Saturday, that'll give me Sunday to put it together and I'll release it on Monday on the 4th. So anyway, if you are new to the show, you have no idea what photo assignments are. I have a whole playlist of photo assignments that you can go check out. We do them every Monday and basically I give you an assignment. It allows us to all participate and then I feature the best work in the follow-up video. And uh, if you want to know how you can submit your work, I have a video for that too. So go check those out. And um, I will be doing a couple more videos before the holiday starts. So stay tuned this week. Subscribe all that stuff so you'll be up to date. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.